following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Dave in Clearwater. Hey, Dave, Happy New Year. What's happening, man? <clears throat> happy New Year, too, my brother. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. How you been? I am doing well, man. I'm doing well. Can I throw a quote out at you? Sure. <laughs> in the market, somebody knows something. Someone always knows something. That statement was made by a great trader by the name of Tom O'Brien about six, seven years ago oh yeah and it kind of hit me like a brick but you're right somebody always knows something hey carlos what's going on brother i'm calling you back tom this morning i had the pleasure to talk to you and your son and i don't want to miss the opportunity to talk to you again why well, I, I think you made some money on this bond <laughs> oh yes tom your newsletter helped me oh, that's a beautiful yeah. thing we appreciate the growling problem us out here now tom o'brien <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's making a great night, folks. Love has no obligations or expectations. When you love, whatever you do is because you want to do it. It becomes a pleasure. It's like a, a game and you have fun with it. When you love, you don't expect something to happen. Whatever happens is okay and hardly anything disappoints you. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 44, NASDAQ up 12, S&P is flat, gold contract up $1.20 trading at 1,256 an ounce, silver up 2 cents, $17.16 an ounce, platinum up a buck at 9.48 an ounce, copper down a penny at 257 a pound light sweet crude flat $51.35 a barrel notes 10 year note up 8 ticks 12603 30 year bond up 12 ticks 15321 now you had notes and bonds folks you know last week they go top side have wide price spread have the volume behind the move all of the above yesterday you come down hard guess what today you come down you test those lows you're going into higher volume and rejected it. You're going topside once again. Fed come out with their minutes at uh, 2 o'clock from the May 3rd meeting. Bottom line, inside the minutes, it says, hey, listen, we're going up on the short-term rates. We think we're going to go up uh, a quarter point, which uh, the market was built in. Uh, they're also uh, saying that uh, they're going to start reducing their balance sheet at the end of the year. Well, guess what? The market's not believing it. You had bonds go topside, you had gold go topside, and the dollar went downtown. So it's going to be pretty wild watching this whole thing shake out. King dollar. King dollar's down 199 ticks, trading at 97. The euro is trading at 112 to the U.S. dollar. The yen is at 111.64 to the U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. We're hanging at the highs, folks. Uh, we've been hanging at these highs since March 1st. So the high you're looking at in, inside the spies, $240.32. We've hit $240.53 out here today. You get anemic volume. I mean really anemic, too. We're talking about 29 million shares. That's going into 149 million shares. So bottom line is that, hey, you know, we're up here. The longer you stay up here, the, the higher the probability that you can break topside. But this has absolutely zero juice. Uh, today, we'll probably come in at about 30, let's see, 30, maybe about 45 million. It uh, doesn't look to me that it's going to be able to break topside. That's yeah, your S&P. Dow Industrials, we very well may have another top inside the Dow. And this is going to get really intriguing. The reason being is that what the Dow hasn't been able to do is this. The Dow has now one, two, three, four. This would be the fifth lower high in the Dow. We hit 21,009 today. The last high was 21,033. The prior high to that was 21,046. The prior high was 21,070. The high is 21,169. So you have five low highs. You also have four lower lows. Bottom line, this thing wants to go south. NASDAQ Composite. The Composite and the NDX are laying right at their highs. Composite is up 14 bucks. The high that we're talking about is 61.70. You've hit 61.55. You're at 61.52 right now. NDX 100, same type of setup inside the NDX. 
NDX, we're up 16 bucks. The high today is 57.23. 57.24.71 is the high that was generated out here on the 16th. Um, so 16th, let's go take a look at this. So 16th, we did uh, 1.9 billion. We're at 1.2 right now. That's going to say we're going to do about 1.6. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Gold, what happened is that when the Fed come out with the minutes, uh, folks, okay, gold went from a price point of 1247 to 1257. Uh, you're at 1256 right now. Gold has rejected lower price, uh, is going into uh, the strength that it had last week. We were going into 378,000 contracts. We've done 225. Bottom line, gold wants a higher price. I expect we're going to see gold run up to this 1297 area. We go take a look at the silver market, same type of setup inside silver. Uh, silver got down to a price point today of $16.89. It's rejected lower price. It does have lighter volume. Uh, we're trading at $17.17 .17 right now. Bottom line, looks like this one's small ABC structure on the way up. And anything inside that $17 area is saying that also wants to build some cause. First off, to get up to the $18 area, and I expect to get to the top of this range, which is $18.72. Notes and bonds continue to say that no matter what the Fed wants to do, bottom line, these rates um, are going to stay low. So the 10-year note out here today, let's go through this first yesterday. So yesterday what you had is this. Uh, well, first off, last week we broke topside, and we broke topside with 2.4 million contracts. Uh, we came down yesterday with 1.6. So we were coming down with volume, yet you're going into that strength. What did it do? It got to a lower low today. It's going to have lighter volume than the break top side, which is 2.4. We're 2.1 right now. Rejected lower price. It's going top side. Bonds, notes and bonds, they're not only in the higher range, it looks like they want to stay in the higher range and, in fact, want to go out and take out their April highs. In this particular case, we're talking about 126.20. 30-year bond, exact same type of setup. 30-year bond out here today got down to a price point of 153.03. You're at 153.22 right now. Um, nice setup. You know, the highs are 155.16, and the low of that high is 153.15. So you're already into the, the low of the high. This thing wants to go topside. Looks like it wants to do a, actually an ABC structure on the way up. King dollar. What do we have with King dollar? King dollar is trading at a price point of 97.14. Uh, you've done 29,000 contracts. It looks, it looks to me that King Doll is going to do a bounce here. Uh, you know, yesterday, King Doll had a good day. It went from 96.705 to 97.320. Uh, the volume's not bad out here today. This King Doll can bounce. You know, it would be about time for a bounce. I mean, it, was, it went straight down from the 99.760 area. We'll see what kind of a bounce can get going. And if you want to see something that's uh, just absolutely amazing, folks, um, it's all about Bitcoin. If you want to see something that's parabolic, uh, check check it out. Bitcoin, uh, right now, it's up another 10% today. It's trading at 24.63. That's up 150% since April 1st. That is a parabolic move. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is up 52. You get the Nasdaq up 15. S&Ps are up two. So we had the Fed minutes come out uh, today, and we take a look uh, inside what they have to say. This is what you have, folks. Uh, Federal Reserve, uh, okay, so most Federal Reserve officials judge that it would be soon appropriate to tighten monetary policy again and back to plan that would gradually shrink their $4.5 trillion balance sheet. Uh, this is a quote here. Most participants judge that if the economic information came in in line with their expectations, it would soon be appropriate for the committee to take another step and remove some policy accommodations, according to minutes from the Federal Reserve May 2nd and 3rd meeting. Uh, the statement points towards a hike as soon as the Fed's meeting uh, June 14th. Uh, though F FOMC voters added uh, the caveat that it would, it would be prudent to wait for evidence that the recent slowdown economic uh, activity has been transitory. Uh, soon, okay, so, so that being said, uh, what you had out here, which was really intriguing, was this. So that came out, uh, the Fed funds rate uh, that I still have on Bloomberg is 100%. Uh, going up short-term rate, this is, uh, on June 14th. That being said, what you had simultaneously happen is that the 10-year, they bought the 10-year, folks, and right now you're still at 2.2 on the 10-year. If, if we go over to that market and take a look at that market, 10-year uh, right now, bottom line, rejected lower price out here, uh, wants, it's going to upside, as is the 30-year. Uh, what you had inside the gold market, that also said, you know what? Bottom line, I don't think you're going to go up as fast as you are uh, saying you're going to go up. Uh, and the gold market went from uh, 12, right at the, we went from, yeah, we went from 12.50 to 12.58. And right now you're at 12.56.70. That also wants a higher price. So this is going to be intriguing watch, uh, watching how this whole thing uh, shakes out. Uh, the S&Ps uh, didn't really move, which is pretty wild. So the S&Ps... We take a look at the, the, the future, the S&P futures. Uh, they, they, they went both ways. They ticked down to 23.94. They ticked up to 24.02. Right now, 2,400. Uh, not much movement inside those. Let's go take a look at the Dow Industrials, the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow Industrials. This is what you have out here. The strength out here today is uh, McDonald's, uh, uh, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs put 19 positive points into it. McDonald's is putting 13, Boeing's putting 9, Visa's putting 7, DuPont's putting 6. Taken away from it, 
Apple's taking away five. Verizon four, GE three, nothing really drastic. Inside the NDX 100, strength versus the weakness. The strength out here today is Intuit. That's up 6.8%. Charter Communications is up 3.3. Mattel is up 3.8. Uh, taken away from it is Ultra Salon, down 4%. Alexa Pharmaceutical, down 2.7. Tractor Supply, off 2.5. And Liberty, down 1.7. Uh, some of the higher volume stocks uh, in this low volume market. And it's going to be a low volume market out here today. You have uh, Micron Technology, that's up 61 cents. Uh, Cisco's down 37. You get Microsoft uh, flat. Um, JD.com's down 39 cents. Uh, Intuit's the big mover out here. It's quite a move, too. Intuit came out with numbers. Uh, this thing is a break topside. It's up eight bucks to 137. Uh, the, the amazing part about it is that it just, uh, what it did, um, you know, it not only broke topside, uh, but it, the numbers weren't that large. But bottom line, market loves it. Uh, we go over to Bitcoin. Now, if you want to see something that's amazing, so check this out. Uh, Bitcoin is trading up over 10 percent. Well, in one day, this is. Uh, it's up $247. It's trading $2464. Uh, this on April 1st, folks, was... Uh, there it is right there. April 1st, it was $1,099. And right now, you are at $2,464. It's, it's, it's a parabolic move. Now, Bitcoin certainly has got some great fundamental news, but uh, and, and this is what the fundamental news has been out here. So it, this, this article here is saying it seems nothing uh, can stop Bitcoin from going higher. Uh, the currency is up uh, what seven well, it's up more than seven percent now and they wrote the seven percent it's up 40 it's up uh it's up 10 percent right now um wednesday's gain comes as uh, china was downgraded at moody's bitcoin and then so this is what did happen bitcoin they signed a scaling agreement now we'll check this out this is a digit by this digital currency group now this is pretty intense so it's representing 56 countries no companies and 21 countries at a conference that's going on in New York right now. Um, and this is what it says. We agree to immediately support the following parallel upgrades to the Bitcoin protocol, which will be deployed simultaneously and based on the original proposal. And what the original proposal happens to be is like how this software works specifically. Uh, that's, you know, so that happened today. The announcements is the latest bit of good news for the cryptocurrency at the beginning of April. J at the beginning of April, Japan announced Bitcoin had become a legal payment method in the country. Additionally, Yulmat, Russia's largest online retailer, said it would begin accepting Bitcoin, even though Russia had said it wouldn't explore the cryptocurrency until 2018. Uh, the gains also seem to be boasted by speculation that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission could overturn its rulings on the Winklevoss Twins Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund. The SEC was accepting public comment on its decision until May 15th, but it hasn't yet announced whether it will overturn its rejection of the ETF. So the Winklevoss twins, folks, who were involved in the original, well, with um, Zuckerberg and Facebook, uh, bottom line, they have been trying to get an ETF uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, they had that in there either two or three years. The SEC... About, I guess about two months ago, come out and said no to this uh, ETF. Uh, bottom line is that evidently they're getting a b bunch of pressure right now to say yes to it. Um, so bottom line, <laughs> this is going to be wild watching this shake out. But you talk about a parabolic move, this is a parabolic move. And so the definition, technical definition of a parabolic move, folks, is something that expands more than a 45% angle and, you know, you, you, you actually don't know when the thing implodes, you know. So, uh, you know, this thing was parabolic even if we go back four days ago and it was at 1961. You know, bottom line, if you own Bitcoin, if you own some of that, you're going to decide that, okay, are you going to take some of the heat uh, or do you want to take some bread off the table? You know, uh, because when that goes south and you get an implosion, the sad part about a parabolic move is that most times what ends up happening is that you get a parabolic move and it can take years to come back to that number, you know, because the wipeouts are normally so severe. 
That's so that's that's the heads up in, uh, in the context of it. We go over and we take a look at the GDX. Uh, GDX uh, also has traction underneath it out here today. Uh, GDX traded to a low of uh, $22.20. Right now you're at $22.89. And this is, looks like it's also setting up a small ABC up. Uh, the, the A point on this would be $20.89. Your B point is uh, $23.67, so you almost get three bucks. That would bring you up to uh, the $25 level. And the swing point that it looks like it's going for is the highs that would generate it out there in the 13th, and that's 24.88. This is Tom O'Brien, this is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials right now are up uh, 51. NASDAQ's up 15. S&Ps are up two. We're gonna be right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lending. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, uh, Dow Industrials right now are up 60. You got the NASDAQ up 19. S&Ps are up 3. If we go over to the uh, NQs, the NDX100 futures, they are trying to get up and over their high as we speak, folks. Uh, the highs are 57.27.25. We're right at the 57.27. You know, it's got a, a half hour to break topside. We'll see how that uh, baby uh, shakes out. Uh, we go back into the gold market. You go in, into the XAU. Let's go take a look at the XAU, the HUI. So XAU out here traded to a low of 83.85. Right now you're at 84.66. 
you rejected lower price. Uh, you were coming into the strength from last week, and I won't get the volume on this until about 8 o'clock tonight, but I suspect we're going to have uh, one of these rejections of lower price, have lighter volume. This thing uh, not only wants to go for the uh, $88, I expect we're going to go up into that uh, April 13th high, which is $90.82. Gold Bugs Index, same type of setup inside the Gold Bugs Index. Uh, Gold Bugs Index right now uh, trading... Gold Bugs Index trading at uh, up a buck at 195. You hit a low out here today of 90, 194.06. No, 190. I'm sorry, 190.34. It rejected that low. We're at 195.05, and this also looks like it wants to run up into this uh, 216 area. Uh, so we we certainly have a lot of movement out here. Uh, if we go back to the dollar index again, dollar index looks like it's having a hard time. There's a couple disconnects here, pretty good actually. Um, the dollar index is down 219 ticks. You're at 97.04. And you get 29,000 contracts traded. Yeah, and this is, man, this is weak. This, it, it's going to be amazing if the dollar index can't do a counter trend bounce. You know, right now, uh, what you have at that 97 level, that's a high volume spike. So we're going to get a, another spike into that. Uh, what this was doing, it actually came into that area with much higher volume. So this is what we did on a 10 minute. What you did is that you, one second right there. We came into that with 2,700 contracts versus 18 on the way up when it got a bit of strength yesterday. So uh, the euro, let's take a look at the euro for a second. The euro right now is trading flat, 112.09. We take this euro, and the euro has almost made the top of the, the range here. The, the top of the range, well, the first top of the range is, uh, it, it got like two more pennies. 114.65 is the, is the top of that range. Right now, you're at 112.10. Uh, we go up and we take a look at the yen. The yen is going to, what the yen's all about is, uh, well, for us, what it's all about is where the metal market wants to go. What we had with the yen out here today is that this is going to be a failure. The yen, the yen got to 112.13. Right now, you're at 111.62. This thing came down fast, uh, got stronger, fast and furious. As soon as the Fed meeting came out, the yen, the yen went from uh, that 112.10 to 111.59, right now we're at 111.63, and it looks like the end's gonna you know, try to dig its way into this 111.43 uh, uh, as we get into the markets uh, tonight over in uh, Japan. If we go take a look at the Nikkei, uh, Nikkei out here last night was up $129. You're at 19,742. So you were going into 1.2 billion, and we did 1 billion, yeah. So you can get some sideways movement. Uh, the number to keep your eye on on the Nikkei is going to be the 19,615. So right now you're at $115 over that number. We, we take a look at the oil market. So oil numbers come out this morning, folks. Uh, the drawdown uh, was more than the market was looking for, and that should be very bullish. That being said, oil has not been able to hold price. So what, what oil is doing, it's not, it's not that it's down either. It's Oil right now is trading 51.30. Now, the 51.30 is important to keep your eye on. The reason being is that this is where oil got blown apart on March 8th. March 8th, we went from 54 to 51. It did a nice bounce, got all the way back up to... 54, April 11th, blew apart again, went from 53 to 50. You're coming into that area, and yesterday was the first day that it started testing that area with dramatically lighter volume. Uh, what you have out here today is that it hasn't been able to hold the 5179 area. Now, the reason that that's important uh, is that you're coming into the downdraft number one, and that's a normal bounce thus far in a market that still looks like 
it has problems. Uh, when you go take a look at the XLE, you can see that the XLE is not getting any traction, which is pretty amazing. You know, you, you get oil that went from 45 to 51. It's like, okay, why aren't these oil stocks getting any traction? Well, the bottom line is that someone keeps selling them. Right now, we're at the 67, 67. Uh, the low is 65, 83. Uh, that was May 4th. If we look at the two largest weighting structures uh, inside that, XLE, you'll see ExxonMobil can't hold the highs either. That's down from 92. You're trading 82.25. Chevron also can't uh, hold price. This is down from 119, and that's trading at 106. Both of them look like they want to hammer the bottom. Um, we go over to the financials. We take a look at the financials. Financials are flat out here today. Uh, the XLF is trading at a price point of 23.57. And you're coming up to the downdraft of the 17th. Now, it's holding price, but it certainly doesn't have the vol behind the move. You know, we came down with 141 million shares. You're going up into that with 49 million. Yeah, so that's a little problem in paradise. Uh, we go look at JP Morgan, who ha which has been one of the strongest stocks in the XLF. Uh, that also just can't seem to, you know, actually get up into the high of the downdraft. The high of the downdraft on JP Morgan is 86.39. We hit 85.97 today. You get 8 million shares and you're going against 24 million. This is, this is strictly coming into a supply line and that supply line is pretty intense. And the supply line, folks, is that each and every time it goes up into that supply line, they just sell right into it. Um, we go take a look at Berkshire Hathaway. Now, Berkshire Hathaway is the largest weighting structure inside the XLF. Uh, this has gone from a price point of 177 to 164. Same type of setup. Uh, Berkshire actually has a high volume, uh, low laying out here at 160, 97. And right now you're at 164. So... We'll see uh, how this baby shakes out in the next few days. Now, what we do have is that you're coming into the long weekend. Uh, we'll come into the beginning of the summer. That is going to reduce the volume even more. And what you can expect the rest of this week is that we have a market today. We get a market tomorrow. Friday, folks, these desks right across the country are going to move out at noontime. So bottom line, if, uh, if this market stays flat or can make it sideways to then, we won't have any action until next Tuesday. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow right now is up 66. NASDAQ's up 20. S&P's are up 3.5. We're going to be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2000, 
2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is up 72. You get the NASDAQ up 22. S&Ps are up uh, four. Let's go over and we take a look at the Dow Industrials next because the Dow, uh, I just want to see if it got over this last high. So, it, the number, oh, this is going to be so wild watching this thing shake out. So 21,033, folks, is the number to keep an eye on. We've got to 21,012 thus far. The reason that that number is important is that the Dow has not been able to get over a high uh, since March 1st. So it's making a run for it right now. We were just talking about the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ did get over this high. Now you see, you see okay, uh, how far can it break away from the high, because the high that the NASDAQ has just uh, got up and over again is that uh, 57.2750, uh, you're at 57.2950 right now. We take a look at the NDX 100, the three Qs, correlation inside the three Qs is that uh, it's pretty intense. You know, you're going into the high of 139.64, You, it's, it's over with 12 million shares versus 21 million versus the downdraft of 55 million. But bottom line, guess what? You get over it, you can go higher. We look at the small caps. Uh, small, now, the small caps going to get interesting out here, and this is why. The small caps have been in this consolidation going all the way back till November, uh, December 7th. Has got out of it twice. You know, we, we broke topside for five or six days in February. It broke topside three or four days in April. And what, they're, what the small caps are doing right now, we are, the IWM is at 137.60. Uh, that is the number that you got to keep your eye on. The reason being is that the low before we gapped down was the 137.62. Uh, what would be a failure is that if the small caps close under 137.04, and right, well, the IWM, right now you're at 137.60. It's coming into an 18.6 million versus the 50 million, but bottom line is that uh, if in fact we do close over that uh, number, that, that they can jam that thing uh, into a higher price. We get over and we take a look at the um, composite. I suspect the composite's more than likely right there also. The composite uh, is at 61, 62. That hasn't reached it yet. That got about eight more points to reach it. Uh, the IBB, we take a look at the IBB. Um, IBB still in a consolidation today. You got a flat market inside the IBB, 291. You're trading 291, that's uh, up 36 cents. This has kind of been hanging here since going all the way back into the February 15th time frame. Uh, Lowe's came out with numbers this morning. Uh, Lowe's is down $2.59, trading $79.75. Now, if you take a look at Lowe's, what you're going to see is that uh, before the numbers come out yesterday, you could see that someone, you know, felt that uh, these numbers weren't going to be what the market was expecting. You'll see that lows came off its high from 84 to 82, had an expansion of volume. Uh, lows is trying to fill the gap that's left over 
uh, from their last numbers where that's when that stock went from 74, gapped higher to 82. Uh, the close of that gap, folks, is a 75.93, and I expect that is going to get closed. Uh, if we take a look at this and we put this on a weekly basis, let's see how we're set up here. Okay, so on a weekly basis, you're coming into 51 million and you've done 33 thus far. So this is gonna be an interesting one to watch to see how you come into, the, so we're at 79.76. The way, the top of the bar where the strength was, was 82, the bottom is 74. So the way that this is traded is that you very well could go to the bottom of this bar. You know, we'll see uh, if in fact it can get down there. We take a look at this and we put this on a monthly, and on a monthly basis, it wants to fill that gap. Not much else has happened on a monthly basis. Now, let's take that and do the correlation inside Home Depot. Uh, so Home Depot, this is uh, up 17 cents today. It was down to 153.29. Has rejected lower price. Let me put this on a monthly. Okay, so this on a monthly looks to me like it's starting to top out too. You know, this, this could pull back to like 132. And in both cases, so, so check this out. This is on a technical basis. I mean, these things have had a run extraordinaire. Uh, when you take a look at the, just from 2011, Home Depot was $28. It runs up to a buck 60. Um, you take a look at Lowe's. Uh, that, let's see, so that went from a price point 2012. It's at $27 and it runs up to uh, 86. You know, on, on, a, on a fundamental basis, a uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, you're, you're coming off a crash inside the housing market. Uh, you're coming off an aspect that people first do over their houses, then the market gets going. Uh, more people do over their houses. Bottom line is that it's not that I uh, don't see that happening a lot more but I, I absolutely see that there's a, a bulk of the houses that didn't get done over from the aspect of uh, the downdraft of seven and eight, got done over already. Now what you have is that you have actual individual owners versus large companies that were doing over thousands of houses. It just makes sense that, guess what? You, you're gonna get a pullback. So we'll see where that whole thing uh, shakes out. Uh, it's certainly, they're certainly not coming off those highs with volume. Um, we go take a look at Toll Brothers, which is a big housing uh, company. Toll Brothers is trading $37.96. Uh, this baby here, let's see what it's, it's doing. Okay, so this is a... This has been in the same, this is pretty wild. This has been in the same consolidation since 2012. You know, uh, 2011, it's trading $13, gets up into this uh, $38 level, it's still hanging there. Let me bring this back further. Yeah, still the same place, man. That's interesting. You know, the high in this in 2005 was 58, the low is uh, 49. Now that still has a, this is intriguing because the supply line that it's still coming into is that supply line. And there's big volume on that supply line. That's a long period of time, man. We're, we're at 2017. It's hard to believe. Time is just such a wild thing. And what I mean specifically is that, you know, you go back to the high of uh, Toll Brothers, which is 2005. So you were talking, uh, what, 12 years ago? 12 years ago. It seems that that 12-year period has gone very fast, big time. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Go take a look at uh, the, the fight between uh, Amazon and Walmart. Amazon still at highs. In fact, it's breaking another high today. Amazon's going to hit this 1,000. I mean, it's, it's so close to us. It. like, why not? You hit uh, seven, no, 979 today. You know, what, you're 21 bucks away from 1,000? Why not hit it? 
Um, Walmart, we take a look at how uh, Walmart's trading out here. Walmart is uh, flat today, $78.22. You stay right there, folks, and we come right back. Dow Industrials right now up 78, NASDAQ up 25, S&Ps are up five and a half. We're gonna be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow right now is up 79. You get the NASDAQ up 26. S&Ps are up uh, five and a half. And we take a look at this. You get the uh, Dow Jones up uh, three tenths of a percent. S&Ps up two tenths. NASDAQ is up four tenths, and uh, it looks like we got another high coming in. Uh, we are at 61.64. Uh, that's uh, 61.70 uh, on the composite. NDX 100, though, a bottom line, it's going to be a high. Uh, the closing high thus far in the NDX is 57.24. You're at 57.31 right now. Uh, the S&P, let's go take a look at the... S&P, S&P out here. So the closing high, well, the high flat out is 2405. Your closing high is 2400. And it looks to me like uh, this baby's going to basically get up over it. Uh, volume, volume's anemic once again, but uh, we're at uh, 571 million on the NYSE. That's saying it's going to come in at about 750. Well, 
That means I got to put 200 million in it the next uh, five to seven minutes, but they can do that. Uh, we take a look at the NASDAQ composite inside the composite. We are at 1.45, so the composite is going to commit at about uh, 1.7. Uh, the, there's no doubt the, when you take a look at the cues, this is about as anemic as you can get, but we can get, uh, coming into the, the Memorial Day weekend, this can get more anemic, there's no doubt about it. Meaning that, okay, so we're taking out the high of the 16th of May. 16th of May had light volume in itself, that light volume being 21 million at 139.64. You're over the high, we're at 13 million, uh, bottom line, the, what you see inside the, the queues, I don't expect a lot more volume to come in at the queues. We go over to the GDX. What will be interesting here into the, inside this GDX is to see what kind of volume they put in it at the close. There, there'll be some volume at the GDX. Uh, the GDX right now is uh, up 27 cents. It rejected the lower price. It's at 43 million right now. And it would be really sweet if this thing came in somewhere. Well, actually, it's, it's already, it already has what it needs. 43 million is fine. Um, you know, you, you start, you, you, if they pile uh, another 10 million at the close, which you very well could do, um, that would be a big number. That would be saying that um, the probability goes much higher that we'll run right into Friday topside. If we look at the largest weighting structure inside the GDX, which is Barrick Gold, that rejected the lower price, had lighter volume. Uh, this is trying to get back inside 1686. That's the number that Barrick has to get back inside. You're at 1667 right now. Newmont, which is the second largest waiting structure, uh, that also rejected lower price. Now, Newmont is starting to pick up. You know, Newmont didn't make it to its lower low. Newmont's been the dog inside that GDX for quite some time. Um, the, the one you absolutely want to keep your eye on uh, is Rango Resources. Uh, Rango Resources last week got into its swing points had an expansion of volume into the swing points, and now what you have, which is really cool, uh, it got down to 91.32 this week. Your swing high is 96. It's rejected lower price. It's gonna have lighter volume. So now this baby has built some strength. It's gonna go make a run for it again. You know, And what I'd like to see inside that context um, is I'd like to see that run more than likely next week. Uh, the reason being is that the, if you're pushing higher, what you want to be doing is pushing higher with volume expanding. That's going to be very hard to do on Friday. Tomorrow, we have a shot at it. Friday, uh, this is light volume today. Friday, the volume is going to be tremendously light. Come back to work on Tuesday. Monday's Memorial Day is also going to be light. That's the beginning of summer trading. Most, you know, this is a longer weekend than normal. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming back with some numbers. Dow Industrials up 78, NASDAQ up 23, S&P's up 5, gold up $2, silver up 5 cents. We're going to be right back, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN. The following is a presentation of TFNN.
The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to Monty in Worcester. Hey, Monty, what's going on? Uh, hi, Mr. O'Brien. How are you? I'm doing great. How you been, man? Not bad. You know, you guys, over the time and with a few of your courses and seminars, you know, you taught me how to fish. That's a beautiful thing, brother. Yeah, it's true. And so what happens is I still listen all all the time, and to not only you, but some of the others, sure. to, you know, get an idea where the fish might be biting. As far as your services, they're a bargain. When you compare them to a certain prominent man with real estate courses at $35,000 and no contact with the lecturers afterwards at all, and you think of what you guys do for a few hundred, and you can get access and ask questions forever, you know, it's a great deal. No, no, we appreciate the growling problem with us out here. Now... Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Release the need to be right. When you believe something, you assume you're right. You may even destroy relationships in order to defend your position. Let go of the need to defend your position. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials up 74, NASDAQ up 24, S&P's up three and a half, gold contract up a buck 80, trading at 12.5730, silver up five cents, 17 dollars 19 cents, platinum up two bucks at 9.49 an ounce, copper. Down a penny at two fifty-seven a pound. Light sweet crude flat, fifty-one dollars thirty-two cents a barrel. Notes, ten-year note up eleven ticks, one twenty-six oh six. Thirty-year bond up twenty-one ticks, one fifty-three thirty. Now, both notes and bonds, folks. Last week they went topside, had wide price spread, had volume. Pull pull back downtown yesterday. Today, what you have? You tested that area. It rejected lower price. The Fed came, excuse me, folks, the Fed came out with their statement of the minutes from the May 3rd meeting. Bottom line, Fed is saying, hey, listen, we're going to go up on rates. We feel like we're going to go up on rates uh, June 14th, short-term rates. We also feel that we're going to start reducing the trillion, $5.000 trillion balance sheet. Bottom line, market doesn't believe them. Uh, you had notes go topside in a big way. Uh, up 11 ticks, 126.06. The 30-year bond go up 21 ticks, 153.30. And uh, that's saying that uh, basically longer-term rates want to go down. And in fact, the, the market was buying uh, the bonds today. They're going after the higher swing points. King dollar, king dollar down 284 ticks. Still can't hold the bid, $96.980. Now, King Dollar yesterday uh, almost looked like uh, you could get some traction. You know, it would be about time that good old King Dollar uh, could uh, you get a bounce. But bottom line, no bounce. The euro is trading at 112 to the US dollar. The yen is at 111 and a half to the US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at it. What do you have? You're at highs, man. This market closed at its high. We're at 24.05 uh, on the cash. Bottom line, that's a closing high. That is a high. That's all of the above. Dow Industrials, let's see what the Dow, if the Dow actually, okay, so the Dow hasn't done it yet. This is the Dow. So the Dow was up 74 bucks. We're at 21,012. Uh, the Dow has five lower highs from the high that was established on March 1st. Uh, it almost made just getting over the high of uh, the 16th of May. Uh, didn't make it out here today. We'll see whether it has the, enough juice for tomorrow. That high we're talking about there is 21,033. NDX 100 and the composite, they're at highs. NDX 100 up 26 bucks. You're at 57.30. That took out the high of the 16th, which is 57.27, and inside the NDX 100. The strength out here today was Intuit was up 6.7%, Charter Communications was up 3.2, Mattel was up three, Electronic Arts was up three. Inside the composite, composite 
traded NASDAQ Composite, traded up $24, $61.63. That has seven more bucks to go. Gold contract, bottom line, market, two o'clock, gold contract rejected lower price. Went topside, we went from 1247 to 1258. You have 237,000 contracts traded. This baby's building cars. You had that strength last week. This baby wants to get up into 1297. Right now you're at 1258. And it's gonna get intriguing coming into this long weekend because the bottom line is that on a Friday, uh, it always gets pretty dangerous inside the metals market. Uh, that being said, if you had a positive week, which we very well could have because of the fact of how we rejected lower price out here today, this thing could take topside in a big way because what we will have is that when this metal market closes on Friday, uh, bottom line is it will open Sunday night, but our markets are, are not going to be opened on Monday, so it's actually a longer weekend. Silver also rejected lower price out here today, $16.89. You're at $17.21. Anything inside $17 gets you in the higher range, so silver looks like it's going to make this run to $18 level, and it's all about, and this has been the most consistent, the notes and the bonds no doubt have been the most consistent, uh, meaning that they continue to go up in price. We go down on yield. The high of the last six months in the note market, folks, is 126.20. We're at 126.06. This looks like it's going to break topside and do an ABC structure on the way up. And I expect we're probably going to see this tomorrow morning because you're pushing into this high. And this is the second time we've pushed with volume. Uh, last week, we had big volume. We pushed with 2.4 million as well as 2.3. We're doing 2.2 today. So there's big buyers in here. And it's, you know, it, to even, we only need 14 ticks to test it. This gets up and over this thing. It's going to be a big move. 30 year, same type of setup inside the 30 year. Uh, 30 year got down to uh, 153.03 today. Wouldn't hang out there. You're at 153.30. And the high is 155.16. Looks like it's going to also go for it. King dollar. What do we have with King dollar? King dollar continues that it just can't handle higher price. And, uh, uh, you know, bottom line is that it's pretty amazing that uh, it can't even get a bid. Uh, yesterday, had, King dollar had a pretty good day. King dollar. Uh, Dollar went from 96.705 to 97.320. Um, it came off that low, had finished, you know, the price structure and ABC structure on the way down, and just couldn't catch a bid. Uh, King Dollar is going to go after this uh, swing low. The swing low we're talking about is the 96.70 mark. Um, if that has volume on the way down, uh, that is going to set up another ABC structure on the way down, which is pretty intense. Uh, the XAU, the HUI, both want higher price. They rejected lower price out here today. XAU went to one went to eighty-two dollars thirty-eight cents. That closed at eighty-four eighty-six. Gold bugs index, same type of setup. Uh, Gold bugs index got down to one ninety. It closed at one ninety-six. Bottom line, um, you know, divergence is out there in spades. And the divergence would be that the Fed is saying that. It still wants to raise rates, where the bond market is saying the 10 years at 2.2. And 2.2, folks, is at the lower end of the rate structure in the last six months. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Dow finished up 74, NASDAQ up 24, S&P's up four bucks. We're gonna be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Had the Federal Reserve come out uh, with their minutes from the May 2nd and 3rd meeting. And what you have here is that uh, so uh, most Federal Reserve officials judged that it would be soon that it would be soon. It soon would be appropriate to tighten monetary policy again and back the plan that would gradually shrink their four point five trillion dollar balance sheet. Uh, this is a quote now. Most participants judged that if economic information came in about in line with their expectations, it would soon be appropriate for the committee to take another step in removing some policy accommodation, according to minutes released out here today. Uh, the statement points uh, to a hike as soon as the Fed's meeting, which is on June 14th, though oh, FOMC voters added the caveat that it would be prudent to wait for the evidence that a recent slowdown in economic activity had been transitory. Um, so what you have out here is this. Uh, officials uh, opted at the May meeting to leave uh, the target rate for their benchmark lending rate. And that their benchmark lending rate, by the way, folks, is just bank to bank. Unchanged at three-tenths of 1% to 1%. They have projected three rate increases uh, in 2017, including the hike they made in March. Um, so if we go over, we first off uh, take a look at uh, what the probability structure is. Uh, the probability uh, that we have on the Bloomberg uh, terminal right now is at 100% for the June 14th rate hike. Um, so bottom line is that we'll see how that shakes out. Now, when you take a look at the, the balance sheet uh, aspect of it, this is how the, the balance sheet shakes out, uh, which is going to be interesting to see how they uh, basically reduce this. So what you have is that the... Federal Reserve folks, okay, when they opt their balance sheet, what they've been doing for years is that they've been buying bonds. They've been buying treasuries. They've been buying mortgage-backed bonds. They've been buying, you know, um, mostly government bonds. What they've also done is this, is that they've not only bought them, but when they expire, they're using those to buy more. So what the expectation is going to be, well, they're going to come out. What they also say inside these minutes is that they, let me see if this is right here uh, so I can quote for you. Okay, so the expectation, it's not in this article. The expectation, uh, which they laid out in the minutes today, 
uh, was that they would explain to the public and funds and all of the above how they were going to do this. Uh, and it looks to me like they have to explain it pretty quickly because if they plan on doing this by the end of the year, um, you know, the explanation, the market's going to want to know how they're going to do it. Uh, what I expect they're going to do uh, is instead of reinvesting the amounts of money that are paid on these bonds when they become due, they won't buy any more bonds. You know, see, because when you look at, when you look at the aspect of um, how they came into the market, folks are always thinking that this market could get destroyed if, in fact, they sold the bonds. And, yeah, there is no doubt about that because they're probably one of the largest owners of bonds. That being said, what they only have to do it's just like you buy a bond, the bond expires, you're getting paid the interest, you get the cash, cash goes back into the Fed, bottom line, they don't buy any more bonds. So we'll see if that's how they're going to reduce that balance sheet, but I expect that's how, uh, what we're going to see. Let's go to Rich in Portland. Hey, Rich, what's going on? Hey, Tom, thanks for taking my call. Sure, thanks for calling, uh, thanks for holding. It's uh, very timely that you're talking about the Fed and their possible action in June. Would that action hurt anyone looking to buy into some of these junior gold miners? In particular, I was calling about Richmond Mines. Well, it didn't hurt today. I mean, the, the, the market is saying, what the market said out here today, and this is what's so intriguing about it, as soon as that, that came out, the market is not believing that the Fed's going to go up that quickly because bonds went up immediately. The gold and silver equities went up immediately, as did the gold and silver contract. And, that's uh, what and the I dollar noticed, went down. Okay, That's what I noticed about Richmond yeah. was 2 p.m., this thing starts going up and on volume. Yeah, so let's take a look at it. you got uh, Richmond Mines. This is a Canadian gold mining company. owns and operates a mine uh, located in Ontario and Quebec. Let me just see what this I remember this. I haven't dealt with this one for a long time. I'm just curious what they do now. Okay, so they're taking it at $197 million. They're taking it at about 46 to $52 million a quarter. Okay, so it looks like the rest of them. Consolidated. Caught a bit out here today. Let me see this. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it wants to make a run to like 859. You're at 715, you know. And they, this looks just like the rest of them out there. You know what I mean? You, okay. You, you come down, you've consolidated out, a rejected lower price. Your first swing point is that, that April swing point. That's what they look like they want to go for. You know, the, we're still dealing, you know, with the downdraft from November. You know, and this one here, this is $9 is the high, six forty was the low. You're into it now, seven fifteen, which is good. The, the, the further you get into that bar, you know, the more probability is that, okay, maybe you can get up and over it. But okay. it's set up the same way. Uh, now, what you're going to want to look at, this is interesting, so if you go, okay, so you look at the Canadian dollar, the Canadian dollar is at 134, so the U.S. dollar, because what does happen is that you have the, um, that, that aspect of, they get paid in U.S. dollars for gold, their expenses in the Canadian dollar, so now that's just going the opposite way on you, do you know what I'm saying? Which is, yep. which is a negative, just, okay. just so you know that. You know what I mean? It's nothing heavy right now, that's for sure. But if that keeps going, now this is where this is going to get intriguing, folks, inside the metals market. If the dollar keeps going south and the, you know, that would put the metal higher, then you have to really get to understand where your company is doing business. You know, because what we had, I remember this so specifically, and... The early 2000s, well, about the middle. And what it was is this, like Gold Corp was a great company, right? And it just couldn't get the traction that uh, some of these other companies were getting. And what ha happened, folks, is this, is that when the gold market, you know, went up to the $1,900 level, um, they do business in Canada. Well, what also happened is that the Canadian dollar went one-to-one -to, -one to the U.S. dollar. So... The Canadian companies, the, their expenses went through the roof. So you got to, you know, take that, you know, technically this thing wants to go higher. 
But be careful with that if, in fact, this dollar keeps going lower because it's going to make a big difference. And this is where, and this is where folks, <laughs> this is what ends up happening, which is really wild, is that if you go over and we take a look at, uh, you just got to be aware of it. You know, whether they're doing business in Mexico, South America, Canada, um, or South Africa. So th this could affect somebody like a big gold or miner like ABX. Not as much. That's what happens. This is the, the, the difference is, see, Richmond only does business in Canada. Right. They only do business at the Canadian dollar. It doesn't affect the larger ones because they do business all over the world. Okay. That, that's a big difference. All right. You stay right there. Okay, we're coming right back, folks. Dow finished up 74, NASDAQ up 24, S&P's up 3.5. We're going to be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And let's go over, and if you want to see something that's just uh, pretty amazing, uh, if we go into, uh, we're going to do more than just Bitcoin out here, but if you go uh, into Bitcoin, folks, Bitcoin was up almost 10% today. Uh, this is trading at $2,434. Uh, you, you know, if we go back to the 1st of April, what you're going to see is that you're trading at a thousand bucks. That being said, so, uh, Bitcoin is up 30% just this week. Uh, I want to pull up this other one because what you have here is that the market capitalization of digital currencies has soared 50% in the past seven days to 90 billion. Now, the market cap they're talking about is that 
Um, you take these exchanges, there's exchanges that are out there, people get, you can buy and sell on the exchanges, and so it's doubled uh, in the course of uh, seven days, right? Yeah, the course of seven days. Let me see if I can pull this one up, okay? So the value of Zcash, a cryptocurrency announced with partnership um, with JP Morgan has grown 200%. Let me see if I, gotta, if I can pull this up. Zcash, nothing yet. Okay, Z, oh, I know what I'll do. Let me do it this way. Bitcoin, I can pull it up this way. Bitcoin, I'll see what the exchanges are. That's what we'll do. Okay, so the exchanges that I have, I don't have this one, but you have, I have Bitcoin, I see, Bitstamp, uh, if you happen to be watching Target TV, what you're looking at, uh, there's four exchanges that the Bloomberg Terminal uh, has, well, actually, there's six exchanges that the Bloomberg Terminal has up. No, there's four, two of them in euros. If you look at this, what you're going to see is that on Bitstamp, uh, your bid is 24.26. The offer is 24.30. On Coinbase, uh, you're talking a bid of uh, 24.35. On ItBit, it's 24.27, and on uh, Kraken, it's uh, 23.94. Big numbers, man. There's no doubt about it. Um, when you do take a look at how this is trading this is not going to end cool folks you know the what what does happen with parabolic moves and this is a parabolic move is that this can hey, listen the, 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 well there's not there's not a way to shot this number one so people don't have to worry about you know getting uh, basically shot it and the, the thing goes up uh you know another five hundred dollars which can go about two seconds in fact can go up a thousand dollars in two seconds two two or three days um, where, the, where the problem lies is that folks that are getting in at this particular point, because when you do get a parabolic move, the, when this thing crashes, which it will, um, most times you don't see it go back to that level for, for a period of years. You know, when we put this on a monthly basis, this is just phenomenal. Um, if you're watching Tiger TV, I have this just on May. In May alone, it's gone, it's gone up $1,000. 1330, you're at 2473. Yeah. So, bottom line, beware. And if you if you do uh, own coins, pots of coins, you know you really should be making a decision uh, to take some money off the table. You know, because what what does happen on a parabolic move, you never get a chance to get out of it. Uh, and as I said, yeah, it can go up another thousand dollars. The way that I would look at this is saying, hey, what else have you had that has gone up in one month? A um, hundred and 20%, because that's what you have here. It's, it's pretty intense, actually. It's, it's really intense. Uh, some of the Dow stocks out here today. Uh, now, Dow hasn't reached another high. Uh, you know, we'll see whether that can get up and into it tomorrow. What we did, let's go look at the volume characteristics. Uh, so inside the NYSE today at 797, um, which is not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Inside the NASDAQ composite, 1.6 billion. Uh, the the three Qs, the three Qs, this is where the anemic comes in in, a, in an incredible way. We did, 50, let's call it 16 million. We did 15.9 million. Last high up here, which was anemic by itself, had 21 million. You come off that high with 55. Uh, you're at highs, coming into a holiday weekend. It's going to be pretty wild next couple of days. Uh, the IWM, uh, IWM did 21 million shares closed at a 137.49, and that actually is a failure on price and volume. Uh, this little baby here, well, no, it's a close, it, it, not really. It, this would have to close, no, this has to close under 137.04. What it, what it had done is this. It went into the, the gap, which is 137.62, couldn't hold the gap, and we came off that gap with 50 million. Uh, we'd have to get back under the 137.04 uh, in order to basically have that failure on price and volume. That's on the daily. We put this on a weekly, and uh, you know we're coming into a down week of 189 million, and we've done 58 thus far. 
Let's go over to the GDX and see what they threw into the close in the GDX. They threw in a 10 million shares, so that's pretty good. Uh, we were 45 million coming into the close and ended up doing uh, 56 million. And if you are in those metal markets, folks, you can expect it's going to go after the high that was established last week, uh, which is in the GDX is 23.67. If we get volume coming into that high, you get an ABC structure on the way up. And that's how these, it seems to be working out. It's going to get a little tricky. There's no doubt coming into Thursday, not Thursday so much Friday. Friday, this is the beginning of summer. Friday noontime, these desks are going to clear out. You're going to see, if we thought volume is uh, uh, small right now, that volume is going to crunch down in a huge way. So the real question is, uh, what kind of action do you get out here tomorrow? Uh, what kind of action are we going to get the following Tuesday? Because the following Tuesday normally, on a, at the beginning of the summer, is very slow also. Uh, as summer starts, now... You're actually talking Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, where you can get some fast, good movement inside the marketplace. Normally, Mondays and Fridays in the summer, bottom line, you, don't, you normally don't get that much movement. Um, the yen, if you happen to be in these metals markets, the yen out here today failed on price, failed on volume, uh, and is, is moving basically lower as we're, um, you know, going through the, the time frame right now. The yen has just gone from a in the last uh, hour from 111.67, we're at 111.51. That's saying this yen can make it all the way down to 111.43 tonight. And what the market's going to be digesting is what the Fed minutes uh, said. What the market absolutely loved out here today, uh, meaning the bond market and the metals market, uh, and the dollar couldn't stand, is the aspect that uh, inside the meeting minutes uh, as to how the Fed was going to roll off the um, their balance sheet. And it looks that the more the people start looking at this, they're going to roll it off in the aspect of what I was talking about um, in the first segment, meaning that they let the bonds expire. As they let the bonds expire, they don't reinvest the bonds. That's the first part. Now, the second part's a little more um, important in the aspect of why it's so dovish. And the second part uh, is the aspect, let me just see this, how, this, how they're saying this. What, they, what they're saying is that they're also going to let only a certain amount, uh, they're not going to let this thing happen quickly. That's the real bottom line. It's going to be like a small glacier move um, and it happened very slowly. And if it happens very slowly, guess what? We all can get used to it. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials finished up 74. NASDAQ up 24. S&P's up 3.5. We're going to be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. 
Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. So let's take a look at this because this is pretty cool. So if we break down... Uh, I got a chart. If you happen to be watching Tiger TV, folks, uh, what you're looking at uh, is that you're looking at a uh, up-to-date chart uh, of the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve. Now, if you haven't watched Tiger TV, folks, remember, you can just go to TFNN.com anytime, hit Tiger TV right on the right-hand side, including uh, on your cell phone, okay? Uh, you, it's bottom line, is it comes out great. So check it out 24 hours a day. Now, on the left-hand side, what you're going to see is that the assets, uh, the assets, this is the 5.4 trillion. Now, what you have is this. Percentage-wise, you have 55.1% is in U.S. Treasuries, and you'll see 39.5, and you'll see MBS. That's mortgage-backed securities. Um, that is what's going to get reduced. And just to give you an idea um, uh, how the reduction will take place, okay, this is going to take, this is, this is going to be a, a period of time. There's no two ways about that, because what they're saying flat out is this. Uh, at the May meeting, uh, nearly all the officials expressed a favorable view of a staff-presented general approach to shrinking the balance sheet that would involve gradually increasing runoff caps every three months. The caps would start off low and eventually reach full-phase levels, which would then be in place until the size of the balance sheet was normalized. So what the cap would be is this, folks. Let's picture that you know, we'll just use smaller numbers. Let's picture that they say that, okay, we have amount of bonds that are expiring in the next three months. Let's say that, that we had 100 million that were expiring. Depending what they would start, what they're saying here is that they got, they're gonna start off with a small cap. So they might say, okay, we have 100 million that are expiring. We are gonna put a cap on that. The first 30 million that are expiring, we are not gonna reinvest. That's how the market is kind of reading that. That's what a cap specifically is. <clears throat> I suspect that's going to be the test drive to see how the market reacts, number one, to, to the aspect of, okay, they don't reinvest it. Then, as they say right here, and that's the, that the caps would start off slow and eventually reach a fully phased-in level, which would then be held in place until the size of the balance sheet was normalized. Uh, policymakers agreed that they should provide additional details of the plan soon, and nearly all said it would be appropriate to start this process this year, provided their expected path for rate hikes stays on track. Uh, in their closed-door meeting, officials discussed a brightening global economic picture and viewed recent soft inflation and output data as likely caused by transitory factors. Uh, growth slowed in the first quarter to an annualized pace of seven-tenths of one percent, even, even as unemployment continues to decline. Labor Department data released two days after the meeting showed that the jobless rate in April fell to 4.4 percent, the lowest rating since 2007. Now, another caveat in here goes like this, and this is what it is. This is going to be, this is, this is a problem right now with the Fed. 
Progress towards the Fed's 2% inflation goal, however, has wavered, which could be a problem for the central bank should that persist. The Fed's preferred gauge of price pressures fell to 1.8% in March from the 2.1% the month prior. And a core index, which excludes energy and food, dipped to 1.6%. So what the Fed is looking for, folks, the Fed wants a full 2% inflation rate going in the economy. And if that's what they get, uh, bottom line, your probability does get higher, uh, that this will, the tightening will take place. And the, the way that the, the market is looking at it right now is that the market is looking that it's going to be a very slow process because um, at, right since 2 o'clock, what you've had, you've had the bonds go up, the notes go up, gold go up, the dollar go down. Uh, that being said, the aspect of how it rolls off the balance sheet, it looks to me what the market is looking at, what the interest rate structure is looking at, is that the Fed is saying, yes, bank to bank, we're going to go up, we're going to go up June 14th, and then the next meetings go like this. You have June 14th, you have July 26th, September 20th, November 1st, and November 13th. Now, they said they wanted to go up three times. They've already gone up once this year. If they go up the 14th, then you can take your pick of what month, and they got plenty of time to go up one more time. That being said, that would put the short-term rate, bank-to-bank -bank rate, at 1.25 to 1.5. What you have However, inside the actual bond market, the bond market out here today, and this reflects inside the mortgage rates, we are 2.25 on the 10-year. That range in the last six months, the low is 2.1, the high is 2.6. You can see we're at the low end of that range. So the market itself is saying that you're, the, the Fed only controls a bank-to-bank -bank rate. What does happen, and what's supposed to happen what they, what they, when they push this, though, is that as the bank-to-bank -bank rate goes up, what's supposed to happen is that the 10-year the is supposed to go up, the 30-year is supposed to go up. It hasn't happened, okay? It's just the opposite has taken place. So what the market is saying there is that they're gonna basically come off the lever very slowly. What it looks to me is this is that the bank-to-bank -bank rate, bottom line, wants to go up. The longer-term rate, because they're going to be so slow about the reinvestment of and the demand for more bonds, um, the market is saying that there's still more demand than there are bonds available in the marketplace, and that's going to keep the 10-year low, and it's going to keep the 30-year low. Because you have to remember this. This is what ends up happening. We're at 2.25 on the 10-year. The United Kingdom is at 1%. France is at 8 tenths of a percent. You get Sweden at 5 tenths of 1%. All this money from across the world, folks, has to find a place to go. Some of our, our rates are some of the highest rates that, specifically, they're the highest rates that you... You, you, your probability of getting your money back is almost 100% inside treasuries, okay? Our rates are still very high. That dictates where bonds go because what is very easy to figure out is this, is that it's public information, number one, how many bonds we have out there. It's also public information that the treasury releases as to, excuse me, folks, as to how many 10 years they're going to release? How many 20 years? How many 30 years? Our debt structure, as it goes out, tells the marketplace, the Treasury tells the marketplace, we're going, to, we want, we're going to send this bond out, this bond out, this bond out. So, of course, the large buyers of bonds, including, you know, China, Central Bank, Japan Central Bank, pension funds, they look at that and they say, oh, my God, hold it. They're only putting out so many bonds... We want to buy bonds, we're going to price them up. That's, that's what the Fed is fighting right now. So we'll see where the whole baby shakes out. But the way that the market is looking at it right now uh, is saying it's going to be very slow. And that is an indication um, that monetary policy 
is still going to be slow for quite, quite some time. What would change that uh, is that if their economies and their interest rates went higher. If their interest rates are staying lower, we still have big time rates, and that's saying our rates are going to stay lower. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. If you would like to test drive the Gold Report, you can do it by coming over to our website at TFNN. Go to newsletters, go to the Gold Report, you can test drive it 30 days, absolutely free. We'll be right back, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow finished up by uh, 74, NASDAQ up 24, S&P's up 5.5. And, and don't forget, folks, uh, no matter where you're listening to TFNN right now, that you can get us always, 24 hours a day, right on your cell phone. You go to TFNN.com. On the right-hand side, you hit Tiger TV. You're going to get some great HD quality video as well as audio. Uh, we get over, we take a look at these uh, markets out here. So you had the uh, Dow Industrials, uh, you know, not take out a high yet. Uh, that being said, S&Ps, take out a high, finish at the high. That uh, says flat out you can go higher. It's going to be really intriguing, too, because we're 2404.39. Uh, that's a closing high. Uh, the high, uh, it almost tagged the high. The, the, the high in the cash S&P from the 16th of May, folks, is 2405.77. I expect it's going to hit it tomorrow because you need that close to it, it might as well hit it. Uh, inside the NDX 100, the same type of setup. I expect what the what you say what you have in the NDX 100 is that uh, it's probably waiting for Amazon to hit the bell. Uh, and Amazon is at 980.35. There's no reason you can't uh, get 20 bucks on Amazon. Amazon 
um, you know, is why not hit the thousand? You know, you went up eight dollars and eighty-one cents uh, out here today. If we go over to Google, we take a look at Google. Google's up another six bucks. That's at nine fifty-four. Maybe that wants to, you know, get into the, that level also. Uh, Apple. Now, Apple today was a little bit different. Apple uh, just couldn't uh, get any get any traction going. Uh, the high in Apple is one fifty-six. You're at one fifty-three right now. Uh, Facebook. We take a look at Facebook. Uh, Facebook uh, is up at one fifty. And that got a little traction. That looks like it wants to get up to that 152 area again. Um, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft is laying out here right at its highs also. You're, you're at 68 bucks. That high there is uh, 69. Now, certainly what you had inside the NDX 100, this was, that wasn't driving the leader inside the NDX 100 today. It was Intuit. Intuitive uh, software was up $8.67. That was the driver inside the NDX 100 today. That being said, um, you know, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, uh, Apple, uh, that's large, large waiting structures inside that NDX. And uh, the NDX also closed at highs, the, the high of the index is 57.24. You close at 57.30. That says you can get to higher price. The, the juice is not behind the move. Um, and we'll see where that, that whole thing is shaking out. Small caps just couldn't handle a higher price, which was, um, you know, uh, that they haven't been able to handle higher price since December 12th, which is pretty amazing. Uh, when, in fact, uh, you know, you got all these other equities that are up and they're, they're, they're not only up good, they're, they're up real good. Um, the, if we go take a look at the uh, silver market, silver is finally catching a bid out here. It rejected lower price, had lighter volume, and caught a good bid. I mean, silver is closed almost at its high of a day. It looks like uh, all night long that these metals are going to try to move higher. And that ha has everything to do with how the Fed is going to handle this balance sheet, uh, where the interest rate structure going, and where inflation is going. You know, when we we're talking about the, the, aspect of inflation, the Fed's worrying that it's under 2%. Uh, bottom line is that whether we look at food, whether we look at energy, whether you look at housing, it's a way above uh, 2% when you look at that, that aspect. So, um, you know, when we actually look at the, the marketplace, when I look at the, the S&Ps, it's almost like, okay, um, are you saying uh, inside the S&Ps, is that what's driving this S&P also? Um, Bitcoin, if you have Bitcoin, folks, take a look at that number tonight because that's a parabolic move. Uh, in Bitcoin, you talk about uh, a move that is one parabolic move, and guess what? When you get a parabolic move, folks, and that thing crashes, um, it it won't be a cool scene. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows, and whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a great night, safe night. Look forward to speaking right back here tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. Look at them, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN.